if you are watching this video that means you have already watched the part 1 of this tutorial if you missed it by any chance please watch it from the link in the description and the comment section of this video in this part i have discussed about the requirements and the ergonomics to perform pns or ultrasound or dual guidance lumbar plexus block you will also get an in depth description of various pns guided approaches and their troubleshooting so without wasting time let's begin so for lumbar plexus block if you are using ultrasound or dual guidance we generally use curvilinear transducer as it is a deeper structure and uh, in pediatric patient sometimes i use linear probe if you are using only pns guided technique then 1.5 milliampere would be the starting current with 1 to 2 hertz frequency and 0.1 millisecond first duration 100 to 150 mm 22 gauge short bevel insulated ecogenic knob block needle we need for this block and local anesthetic you can use according to your practice and the convenience for anesthetic block you need to give 0.375% or more and for an analgesic block you need 0.25% uh, or less in all our blocks we use 4 to 8 mg of dexamethasone as an adjuvant and uh, volume would be around 20 to 25 ml or 0.3 to 0.4 ml per kg and i personally use uh, lignocaine with adr mixture for lumbar plexus and sacral plexus block because of especially the lumbar plexus because of the vascularity adrenaline helps in two ways one is early detection of the intravascular injection and second is it constrict the blood vessel to delay the absorption now patient will be placed in lateral position with slight forward tilting side to be blocked will be kept upward and anterior thigh should be visible so that you can see the quadriceps twitch and ultrasound is placed in front of the patient and the performer stands behind so if you see the approaches of the penis guided block the anterior approach we don't perform it anymore because the cadaveric and the radiological investigation proved it that there is no obturator nerve block and we cannot call it 3 in 1 so whatever we will discuss from now onwards it will be posterior approaches out of the posterior approaches we will discuss this four modifications and out of these four i personally use and teach capdevillas approach so let's see what are the modifications and what are their drawbacks now i want you all to see this slide very carefully in winnie's approach we need to draw three lines first line uh, passing through the both iliac crest that is your intercrestal or the toughest line it usually passes through the l4 sinus process or in between l4 or l5 intervertebral space second line is through the l3 l4 l5 sinus process and the line 3 will pass through the posterior superior iliac spine which is parallel to the line 2 so now this intersecting point of line 1 and line 3 will be the needle entry point for the winnie's approach winnie's first describe this approach but the problem with the approach was it is too lateral as you can see here lumbar plexus components are medial to this point so you might miss the lumbar plexus here and if you advance here you can injure the abdominal viscera in chain's approach what was the modification a point 3 cm below the l4 spinous process and 5 cm lateral was chosen this point usually comes below the fifth transverse process here problem was the redirection or manipulation of the needle in cordally was not possible because of the small space here so kefalad redirection was recommended and this was also too lateral decrease describe a point 3 to 4 cm lateral to the l3 spinous process this was also good approach but the problem is especially on the right side it comes close to the lower pole of the kidney so during the plexus block if you miss the plexus you can go and hit the lower pole of the kidney especially on the right side coming to the capdevillas approach which we practice now we will focus the segment this segment between the line 3 and the line 2 so this is divided into the medial 2/3 and lateral 1/3 this is known as the capdevilla points which will be our needle entry point now two more things you need to remember that is while we are inserting our needle it is passing through the skin subcutaneous tissue paravertebral or paraspinal muscles and then the transverse process 
So the distance between the skin and the transverse process is variable. It depends on the gender and the BMI of the patient. But the distance between the transverse process and the lumbar plexus element is fixed, that is 18 to 20 millimeters. So we should not go beyond this distance once we hit the transverse process. Now here on the left side, you are seeing how to draw the landmark for the lumbar plexus block. And on the right video, you are seeing I'm inserting my needle absolutely perpendicular to the skin. So here, if you notice, I didn't hit the transverse process. I directly went in and ultimately hit the lumbar process. So two scenarios possible. One is you hit the transverse process or your needle might be in between two transverse processes. So what I usually follow is after five to six centimeter of needle insertion, I become very cautious and go very slowly. So here you can see we decrease the current and if you are not getting at below 0.4, then that is the point where you should inject. And here, if you have observed that I did not connect the syringe with the extension tubing, this is one of the safety features I found. If your needle tip is inside any blood vessel, the automatically blood will come out, especially in small lumbar veins, where if you connect the syringe or even if you aspirate, the vein gets collapsed and you may not know whether your needle tip is inside. And once you get the your desired EMR, you can deposit the drug at 3 to 5 ml aliquots. In this video, let's see uh, how to manipulate the needle once you hit the transverse process. So I'm going in perpendicular to the all planes. And now here I'm hitting the transverse process, as you can see. Now we have two choices. One is either you can go caudally or we can go in kefala direction. So once you hit the transverse process, measure the distance, note the distance and add two centimeter. So as you can see, I'm using both index finger to measure the distance and I will not remove these fingers throughout the procedure. Now I am going caudally to see whether I can get, the, I can bypass the transverse process and hit the lumbar plexus. So first try with 10 to 15 degree caudally and then you can go up to 30 to 45 degrees caudally to see whether you can bypass the transverse process. Here you can see I could not bypass the transverse process. So I withdrew my needle and was going in kefala direction. As you can see here within this two centimeter distance, I could hit the transverse process and here we can see the quadriceps twitches. Now the rest of the procedure is same, uh, decrease it up to 0.4 and then deposit the drug. You should not get any response beyond the 0.4 because if you are getting response below 0.4, that is 0.2 or 0.1, that means you are very close to the dural sleeves. The injection here would lead to total spinal or the epidural anesthesia. So be careful about that. So while we are inserting the needle, first you can get stimulation of the paraspinal muscles, which you have to just ignore and advance your needle. Next, you can hit the transverse process. Uh, you have to manipulate the needle 10 to 15 degrees caudally or in kefala direction. Then you can either hit the lumbar plexus. You can get twitches of the uh, either swast major or the adductor. So swast major, you will get thigh flexion. And for obturator nerve response, you will get thigh adduction. As I have mentioned that we don't accept the obturator nerve response. It means that your needle tip is too medial. So we have to just withdraw and go a little bit laterally. And if you miss the lumbar plexus, then you might injure the important viscera and vessels.